break. Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. First of all, I feel strongly a legislature should do something about it. This is the, the minimum amount of insurance has been the same since the 1960s. Okay, I know that was before you and I were born, but well, you know, and it's funny that you say 2040 because I said to myself, I think that's I re that was the number that I remember as being the number as a kid that you would get because that was the minimum. But right. that was it's never and it's, it's never changed. It has never changed. Well, it it, it well. used to be 1525, I believe. But then it went to 2040. That was even before my time. Exactly. And right. so that, that doesn't do it. So yeah. what, what can the viewers do? What can someone in Massachusetts do? You can buy under insurance from your own oh. insurance company. I see. So that means for maybe $100 or $150 at most a year, you can buy a policy of $250,000 500 so that when you're in an accident and you're hit by a drunk driver who doesn't have a job, who doesn't have a home, has a $20,000 insurance policy, unless you have this underinsurance, you're out of luck. But if you have this underinsurance policy of yeah. $250,500 and then you've bought an umbrella policy for a million, you may in fact have over a million dollars of self-insurance to protect you from the drunk driver out there from the, the teenager who has no job, yep. no assets or whatever. Yep. And it, it amazes me that the number of professionals, and, and I would bet if we took a test of the lawyers in our office, the majority of them would not know what underinsurance, what underinsurance is. is. And when it's yep. time to renew the auto policy, they'll say to the, their agent, oh, can't you make it a little cheaper? Well, yeah, well, we could do this. But I've never, I, I have found that, uh, unless it's a real good agent, the, they fail to explain this to someone right. that for maybe a hundred, hundred fifty dollars, you can protect yourself. Not only do you protect yourself, but you protect your family and you protect anyone that's in the car with you. Mm -hmm. So if you got hit by a drunk driver, you are with a neighbor and the neighbor's seven-year-old child. If that person that hits you had twenty thousand of insurance and you don't have underinsurance of the two fifty five hundred that poor injured person may get nothing. May get wiped out. The other bonus about this is that the hospital lien, which we talked about, yep. and the health insurance lien that we talked about, which are going to eat away at the 20, in Massachusetts, those providers do not have a right to touch a dime of your underinsurance. Of the underinsurance. Because it is a contract that you made with the insurance company. Yeah, yeah, I see. It, all right, so it's, a, see, yeah. it's an extremely valuable asset to have. So that's an amazing thing. But in the course of that conversation, <coughs> you just started talking about, about umbrella policies, which I, I have a strange feeling is also going to be a surprise. Because I had, in my, I, we have a house, you know, and we have a, you know, it's going to have a standard, you know, regular policy. And then we have an umbrella, which I thought the point of the umbrella was to make sure that if we got sued, right? Yep. I didn't know about car accidents, but, but I, I, I think I assumed that also, even if we got sued because I was at fault in a car accident, that there was this additional insurance that was going to be available to, to And that's its me. primary purpose. So, that's but I saw, I thought that it was only available therefore on defense to, a def, you know, to kind of supplement me if I was at fault. Right. But there's something about an umbrella policy that can actually pay me if I'm in the accident with you and you're at fault? Yes. Absolutely. In fact, in, in our office, I know yep. that um, if you talk to Diane Power from our office, our yep. office administrator, uh, a number of us had her purchase umbrella policies, and I made a particular point of asking her to, um, to speak with the agent and make yep. sure that that umbrella policy included excess coverage for underinsurance, which I it see. does. And the thing to keep in mind, again, is in order to qualify for these umbrella policies, you need to have the 250, 500 underlying car policy. On the house, you probably need to have at least a 300, 600 policy for your homeowner's insurance. So it's definitely worth, I recommend to all your viewers, to call your insurance agent and say, look, I don't understand this. Will you walk me through it? I want to make sure that I'm protected. Yeah so that if I'm hit by somebody that doesn't have enough insurance. Because that's the great fear. That's the great fear. Yeah, you know, that's you the get hit by somebody that's, 
you know, once again, it's in a crummy car and they're going fast. And I know it's a stereotype, it's a young person, you know, and obviously they, they, they don't have a lot of extra money, so they haven't really killed themselves on insurance. Right. right. But all of a sudden, you're the one that's going to take the hit as yep. a result because there's no insurance around. Right. right. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's so pretty amazing. It's really, really something important to do. Um, the but other thing is that if any of your viewers, and they probably are, are on Medicare, mm -hmm. then the rules are different and Medicare will have a right to attach onto the underinsurance by statute. Um, and oh. Yeah, so M Medicare, and Medicare is- Is that the only insurer <coughs> that has that right? Uh, yes, well, no. Now there are these self-insured, what they call ERISA plans. Mm -hmm. So if your employer has a self-insured plan, <coughs> then they have the right to write into the policy certain provisions that they're entitled to be reimbursed out of underinsurance or, or other types of proceeds. So again, it depends on your health insurer, your employer, and those types of things. Now, as I said before, let's say that the driver only had 20 and you don't have any underinsurance yep. and the hospital bills are uh, $25,000. Right. Uh, there's nothing left for the injured party. One of the things that, that I do, and I think that um, a, a lot of plaintiff's lawyers do, mm -hmm. and it's helpful, is I have been able to negotiate with the health insurers for them to reduce their liens. And I think that's an important thing for the viewers to understand, that when you hire a lawyer, even if there's limited insurance, that lawyer can, can work some things with these um, uh, health insurers and lien holders to, re to reduce the liens. Now, if I'm a health, a, a, a lien holder, if I'm yep. a hospital, right. why would I do that? Why would I be willing to reduce the lien? Well, one of the reasons would be, and I've had clients um, do this, is they basically say, if you don't reduce the lien, I'm dropping my suit. Because uh -huh. if, he, if the client, if the injured party is not going to recover a dime anyways. And I'm the hospital, I don't get paid. Right. I don't get paid at all, I see. Okay. I see. So it really is a matter of having somebody that kind of gets all of that stuff. Right. 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 So can I just ask you uh, in a kind of a related or related <coughs> topic? So related to uh, to folks who are say over sixty, do you have you found that people on defense when they get when they when they you know they've hit somebody who is uh, older that they that they tend to be defending by saying oh that person just wasn't that sharp or they weren't paying attention? Do you tend do you find that there's any kind of a built-in prejudice in the system against older people because you assume that they have kind of diminished capacity to take care of things? A absolutely, and, and uh, that goes not only for the defendants but for the plaintiffs. And when I represent an elderly person uh, who's been injured, has a severe injury, and I try to negotiate a settlement, oftentimes the insurance company will offer very small money Mm -hmm. uh, because, quite frankly, they feel, well, this person only has a few more years to go, so we don't think a jury is going to be overly sympathetic. Um, however, you know, my feeling is, is that someone that's in their golden years and has a horrible injury like that, um, why they call them golden years, but that's a second. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know any of my clients that feel it's so golden. golden you know, but years. yes, but so, so right now, now, but by the way, has it, has that been your experience also? Because once again, you, you've done nothing but this. Have you found that that judges or juries tend to kind of look at a seventy-year-old person or a seventy-five-year-old person and say, "Well, you know, I know they got hurt, but they're almost dead. You know, they're almost about done." Well, it, it's not. Uh, I don't think they look at quite that way that you're almost dead. However, not to put it. if if you were in a car accident tomorrow, yep. and yep. I'm the defense, one thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subpoena all of your hospital records, all of your doctor's records, and I'm gonna find out that, believe it or not, in his life, Arthur has had some back pain before. Arthur may have had some shoulder pain before. I see. So you may be in a horrible accident, and you may be in excruciating pain, but all of a sudden, the defense will take the position that you've had these things all your life. And the favorite one of the insurance industry is yeah. DDD, degenerative disc disease. It's just a fancy name for arthritis. I see. Keep in mind, arthritis is just like gray hair. We all have it. It just happens. If we, if we all went in for MRIs uh, over age 40, they yeah. say, there's evidence of degenerative arthritis. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't hurt. 
it's only when you get hit that that arthritis necessarily, if you have trauma to it, I see. Make, make it worse. I see. So that's my experience. Is it, the, uh, and you can make the claim based on that. You can say, yes, the, you know, certainly there was arthritis, but there's no, but, but they ne he never complained about it. There right. wasn't pain before. He wasn't in pain, Because right. the, the compensation is for pain and stuff. Exactly, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm talking this, and this is like really fascinating, but I'm just looking over the corner of my eye, and my camera guy is saying, you know, it's about time to end. Okay. So I really, really want to thank you for coming. I want to thank you for teaching me some stuff about underinsurance. I had no idea about the thing with the, with the house and the umbrella. That's, it was really, really informative, and I think it's informative to a lot of the folks who are here. Uh, I know there are, these are issues that are, 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 are affect everybody, but I think affect a lot of seniors, and this whole notion of protecting yourself against that, that, of, that, dri that you know, other driver, who, the reckless driver who doesn't have insurance, is really a fascinating notion. So thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much all for watching, and we'll see you again on the next episode of Bridge Run Greece. Thank you. Thank you.